Greetings, cinephiles. Are you looking for a movie analysis podcast that stands above the rest? Then look no further than Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters. We analyze good movies, we analyze bad movies, and yes, we also analyze the in-betweens of the world of cinema. So if you like what you hear, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. And yes, my friends, we are 420 friendly. So when you listen to us, smoke smoke it if you've you've got got it. it. And now... Here's a new episode of Collateral Gaming. The show starts right now. I'm Ashley Chancellor. I'm Zachary Gio. And I'm Megan Gomez. And this is Collateral Gaming. Welcome to Collateral Gaming, the only video game podcast that matters, where we focus on good games, bad games, and everything else in between in the world of gaming. We are podcasting straight from somewhere across the United States, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast, so whatever you have, smoke it if you've got it. Blurb it if you blurb it. <laughs> I'm not lying that that uh that intro took like three takes just now, so <laughs> fine. Everything is fine. It's it's all right. It's all right. We all make mistakes, Ash. <laughs> and your mother's was you, but that's okay. Just another just man in Wednesday. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm kidding, Ash. I love you, buddy. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, <laughs> We are here. It's 2024, and uh, this is our year in review episode for 2023. Uh, Hell yeah. Due to the fact that so many fucking games came out last year, um, and Dude. we didn't get a chance to cover all of them, even the ones that like would really be relevant to the podcast, I thought, hey, why don't yeah. we go ahead and do like this year in review thing? A similar hap- thing happened with uh, Collateral Cinema, and I was like, yeah, we should just start doing this. So uh, I planned this for January, although it got delayed a couple times, but it's still the beginning of February. 2023 is a little fresh. And um, yeah, I mean, there were a shit ton of games that came out, uh, several that I had didn't even get a chance to try. So, several that I didn't even hear about until the Game Awards, honestly. Right? Like, or, I didn't even know Alan about... Wake was a thing until... I didn't know Alan Wake 2 what? was happening until the Game Awards came up and it was nominated for Game of the Year. And I was like, huh? Zach, I love you, but my brother in Christ, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. Dude, I, I'm still knee-deep in Tears of the Kingdom. I'm literally playing it now as we speak. I mean, that's fair. I kind of did get sucked into a story with a little uh, specific Slytherin, if you will. Oh. <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> i would have loved to have included for instance Baldur's gate because it won game of the year yes um, mm-hmm. but uh i uh i never i never bought it that being said i did play the demo and i was impressed but just one of us doing the demo is probably not enough for a, a good discussion on the game so unfortunately we'll be omitting no, that, that one or <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, that I and um, everybody it. having a Starian pop up on their fucking FYP. That that little man is all over horn around on my FYP, man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if if you were here to talk to hear about Baldur's Gate, um, we're not talking about Baldur's Gate. I did try the demo. Sorry, fam. It was a lot of fun. I loved uh, customizing my character. I thought the battle system was really interesting. I've never played a Baldur's Gate game before, or I've never, or D and D for that matter. So. It was kind of a fun little introduction, and that's about as much as I'll say about that. Yeah, when I was told that it was a uh, D&D like, like it was inspired by D&D, I was kind of interested because I've played D&D a couple of times, and with the right group of people, that's a lot of fun. Um, but I just I couldn't bring myself to spend seventy bucks on it, Fair uh, especially when I wasn't sure whether or not I'd like it. And yeah, I'm kind of glad that I never did because I watched some gameplay, and it's just it not necessarily for me. And that's fair. that's fair. I hear a lot of people say that, you know, it's like, yeah, it looks like a really phenomenal game. It looks like they put their all into it. The amount of work that it went into it and the quality of the product is there. It's just not for me. And that's fair. That, 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 that's totally fair. Um, let me see. Alan Wake 2 also won quite a few awards. Uh, we didn't, uh, I didn't end up playing it. 
mainly I would have wanted to play the first one first. And, you know, I was just kind of trying to struggling to play uh, as much games coming out as there were. And, and we covered a few of them. Uh, one of the games that we covered, we are going to be talking about again because Megan uh, didn't get a chance to talk about Tears of the Kingdom in our review. So, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we were moving into the house and we were like, uh, what do we do with everything now? Because, I mean, it was that was a chaos point in our lives. And I was like, I want to play Tears of the Kingdom so bad, but like, I got to move into this house, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, and Tears of the Kingdom is an absolute blast. So I'm, I'm really the last time we talked about Tears of the Kingdom, I was kind of shitting on it, but I'll explain that once we get to it. Yeah, uh, I would say why don't we just go ahead and get into it? But I kind of don't want to start with a game that we've already talked about. So let's start with Dead Space since we've all played it at least a little bit. Of oh, it. Yeah. yeah. And I honestly, I had this slated. It was going to be a game launch review, uh, pending of course whether or not I could get my hands on a PS5. I didn't end up getting a PS5 before the game came out, so I didn't get to try it until uh, a few months after the fact, and that's the main reason why we didn't do an episode on it. <laughs> oh, for sure. And you know what? Yeah. I I only played like the beginning to like slightly after the beginning. So talking about it, you guys are going to have a lot more to say than I am. To be I honest, probably didn't get much. Further. I made the clerk. Yeah, I don't think I got it much much further than you did. But unlike you, Megan and I have played the original. Um, and, yeah, and all I am three gonna, of them. Yeah, I played the first two at least and a bit of the third one. And I, I got to say, it is a very faithful reproduction of the first game. And did we not say in our Dead Space review that this game was ripe for a remake? Yes, we were literally talking about that. And I remember us talking to... Um my brother about it after the episode we were like bro we've predicted the freaking future like we were all talking about it which is wild yeah. and i'm so glad that it got a remake it so deserved it that is a great game series well from so, what so good. from what i was able to like mess with the game a little bit for and get past the introductory setting to be honest it's it's gorgeous and i'm really glad that they remade it because it's beautifully done and from what i've seen of the original they did a lot as far as kind of like flipping the base game on its head and completely remaking it. Yeah. Which is incredible. Yeah. I've, I, it creeps me out the beginning of the game. So they obviously did an amazing job. It, it's been a minute since I played the first game, but everything kind of felt like it was a pretty much a one-to-one -one remake. Uh, not unlike what they did with the last of us part one. Like it is, it's basically the same game. It's just, um, you know, in a new engine. It's been remade from the ground up in a new engine, right? Uh, and they did change mm -hmm. the control scheme to better fit. And that was mainly what I was looking for, was just give us the first game, but uh, make it, like, like ad adhere it to... Make it make sense? Yeah, like, like it needs to adhere to standards of a modern game. And Dead Space 2 and 3 did that. They revised the control scheme uh, to work a little bit better. And it's even been a few years since that. So this was honestly a much needed remake. I remember us talking about it, thinking like, yeah, this game really needs one. I looked it up online at the time and I remember there were rumors or there may have been an announcement that like something was, was, was possibly going to happen, but there was no like full title announcement. Uh, and then shortly after the episode aired, I remembered they, they did, they did an official announcement. I think I was it was like, like a week. It, it, it might have been like it was it was very close. And honestly, yeah, like this is all we needed. Now, that being said, some of the things I noticed that they that they did change, of course, was they gave Isaac a voice, something that he didn't have in the first game. And two and three, he he was voiced. But in the very first game, he was a silent protagonist, which I was a little bit perturbed by that. I won't lie, just because like I did love the fact that Isaac was kind of like since we're going to be talking about Tears of the Kingdom link in a sense where he was the voiceless protagonist like i i didn't have like it made you think and and like imagine and use your imagination in a sense and i, I was a little bit perturbed that he yeah, had I, a voice i was like mm. i agree with you there um i never played the original but i like main characters that don't speak which is a part of the reason it's a very small reason but it's part of the reason why i love zelda so much is because link doesn't talk obviously you see in the games that he does communicate with all of these people but he doesn't speak because he's an avatar that the players can basically immerse themselves in the world of Hyrule with. And that's why I love it. And so Isaac talking didn't bother me necessarily, but when I had heard that in the original game, he didn't speak and he was kind of like acting like, you know, Dead Space's Link, it kind of took away from the experience just a little bit, but not much. 
here, but I get what you're saying. Here's my take on it. I do think Isaac being a silent protagonist in the first game uh, did work to its benefit, and th- and there was definitely um, some there, there was definitely some some artistic. Uh, what am I trying to say here? It, it was artistic. Is basically like it added to the horror. It added to the horror because, especially when you get into the twist at the end, which I won't spoil for you, Zach. But oh, um, yes. Like when you get to it, I mean, the whole thing is just kind of like Isaac is your protagonist, and in many ways, he's an unreliable protagonist. Um, and 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 the fact that he's a silent protagonist in the first game does kind of add to that. That being said, Dead Space Two was fantastic uh and giving isaac a voice showed that we could still make a really good death space game with him and in fact the character interactions in that game wouldn't have worked without a fully voiced isaac which is probably why they ended up giving him a voice um so making the first game a little bit more consistent with the other two i think was the goal behind giving him a voice this time plus the fact that you could still make a good game and do that uh second of all that did allow for a little bit more uh, immersion, I, I I should say, because I remember, you know, going through scenes that I definitely recognized that were very familiar to me, but hearing Isaac's voice in those scenes, hearing him respond to other characters and comment on things, and I was like, oh, okay. So, like, and it kind of made me wonder. I was like, well, what happened here, you know, in the original game? How did they explain this, you know? But... It, it does work, and I think it kind of adds a little bit to, for instance, his connection with uh, Nicole as he's looking for her uh, throughout the ship. So, yeah, um, there are some benefits to giving him a voice. Um, I, I, I think it works either way. I'm not like upset or, you know, uh, thought that that change really needed to be made, but it, it is a different take on it. Uh, and every other way, I think the game is definitely an improvement. I mean, the game looks so good. Um, you know. It does. It's so oh, dude, beautiful. It beautiful. They did such justice. Yeah, and um, I, I, I think that there were some additional like weapons and upgrades and things that they added to it. I don't know. I haven't really gotten into the into the game too far yet. I, I still only have the, uh, the the plasma cutter and the the pulse rifle. So nothing really beats the plasma cutter, but the railgun, fan freaking tastic. Oh man, I love the railgun. Um, I love. I the, miss the railgun. I love the um, the one that launches uh, razors. <laughs> I forget what that was called. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, fuck. What is that called? I can't remember it off the top of my head. It's been so long. Yeah, I don't remember, but I didn't. I did not get that far. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, anything else you guys have to add about Dead Space 2023? Um, no, no. I mean, I feel like it was so well done, and it was. It was. It was paying homage to a pioneer of its time and what still continues, like we said in the, in the episode, which, I mean, if y'all haven't listened to that, go check it out, because I feel like that was just a great moment in time and a great episode for us. Um, I feel like it adds just so much to, like, the gaming universe as a whole and, and, and a lot of things in perspective of gaming, and just, it's it's so good. It's so good, and I'm so glad that they paid an homage and did it such good justice, because it deserves that. Uh, I agree. Um, from what I got to play of it, it really, the game takes you for a ride and you're kind of on edge the entire experience, which is fantastic with a game like dead space and how you're kind of alone on this alien ship. It's, you're supposed to feel isolated. It's kind of like how Metroid prime makes you feel the first time you play it. You're alone, you know, and you're, you got to find out what's going on and you got to get the hell out. I was just just about to say, I think did that, did Dead Space take any inspiration from Metroid or maybe take inspiration from uh, a common inspiration, which is uh, Alien? I can definitely see that, you know, just, and like you said, the- I would think Alien, yeah, the common inspiration. I, I, wouldn't Alien. Say, yeah. I wouldn't say it took anything from Prime um, because mm-hmm. it, if, if anything, it took kind of like the direction of the story as well as just like, putting in so much violence it's crazy <laughs> yeah if i recall actually it was a re- it, it was originally going to be a sequel to system shock i think i think dead space started out as system shock 3 if i'm not mistaken um and then system shock later became bioshock so there you go um well bioshock's kind of the the spiritual successor to it in some ways dead spaces 
But yeah, I, I thought it was a fantastic remake. I'd love to play through the rest of it. Uh, I was just playing some yesterday and I was having fun with it. And um, every bit as much attention as was in the first game. I think tension was just such a big part of that game because at any time, enemies could come out at you. The fact that the, the way that they did the UI, by the way, that's how you do UI in a video game. Um, and it's perfect because Absolutely. It, it literally never takes you out of the action. In fact, you, you can't even pause to, to look at the map or go through your inventory. That adds to the tension. And I feel like the tension was ramped up in the remake. I thought that, that, that it, was, it was just a really, really fun, scary experience. And st even having played through the game once already, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But like you think it, you know it freaked what to me the hell out. The remake the first, is like, nope. The first encounter I got to, since I had never played it before, it scared the shit out of me. I was by myself in my apartment. I was like, oh! What, one more thing I'll add, and I guess a minor complaint, is that they really do hammer home the whole you have to cut off the limbs part. Like, I don't know. I don't remember yes. in the original that being so hammered into you because they mention it like five or six times in that like it, 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 uh, first level. Uh, you know, I'm like, okay, I get it. I yes, mean, it's put on the, the walls limbs. constantly. Like, yeah. I, I thought like the whole notion of like seeing it on the walls – and then just jumping into the game and having to remember, like, you know, you see it on the walls and so then you'll remember it. But it's not just on the walls. Uh, uh, somebody says it to you and then you read, like, a log that tells it to you. And, you know, <laughs> they just, like, keep trying to tell you. Like, okay, I get it. Yes, you need to cut off the limbs. All righty. Thank you. Yeah, I think in the original it's, like, on the walls a couple of times and then there's that journal entry. I think I think the journal entry is in the original as well. Maybe there was a little bit of a difficulty curve. I don't know. But uh, they, they, Maybe? They, 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 they they do mention it. I don't know. I think a, a couple times more than necessary. But either way, fantastic game. Fantastic experience. Uh, moving on, let's talk about the other game that all three of us have played. The one that you didn't get a chance to play before, Megan. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. Oh, man. I was so upset that I wasn't able to be on that episode. But... Uh, Alan and I had gotten the house, so we were like, all right, let's go ahead and move into the house and everything. We ended up playing it later, and everyone, I remembered because Dan was on that episode as well, correct? Oh, yeah. Dan was on both of yeah. them, and I, yeah. I worshipped this game the first episode and shit on it so hard the second episode. Was he on and both? Now, I know he was on part one. I yeah. I don't remember. You can have shout out, Dan. We love you, Dan. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Love Dan. I haven't spoken to him in a minute. I can't dude. wait to... Uh, Dan, we were like, I, we were even talking about the fact that he's like barely a, a, a guest host now, and uh, I was, I was, you know, I, I was thinking of maybe uh, you know, introducing him as like an official co-host or something within like, not or like a series regular. Not, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, he he hasn't made an appearance this season yet, and I know he wanted to talk about Spider Man, but um, the timing just didn't work out. But Dan, if well, you're we'll listening, we'll have plenty to talk about March seventh when the new DLC comes out. True, 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 true. Um, and if you're listening, we love you and we miss you, bro. Yeah, dude. Dan, if you're listening, do better, scrub. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I know he just <laughs> moved into that house. Uh, well, actually, that was a year ago. But it was he, a year ago. <laughs> yeah. He just posted about it again because it's been a year, and I was like, man, that 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 house looks so good. <laughs> it does. Anytime. We're supposed to be talking about games, and we're like, no, but Dan. But Dan. <laughs> Um, Tears of the Kingdom, Megan, everything that you wanted to get out, let's hear it in 30 seconds or less. No, I'm kidding. Take as much time as you want. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, it was, um, Alan and I played it together and we played, we played Breath of the Wild and then Tears. So we did get a little zelda out there for a moment. I will not lie. So we ended up having to switch to something else. Um, but yeah, we know we loved it. Um, Have you I definitely it? feel like the depths. Um, we're like 90% of the way there and we put it down. Like, like, you know did you beat the main story? No. <gasps> oh, you have to beat the main story. Yeah. Oh no. my God. It's so good. No. So, so I have this problem and it's a chronic problem where I will get to like 99% through a game to the point where I can like go around and fuck around and do whatever I want. And then I realize that the end of the game is coming and I'll put the game down because I don't want to stop living the first playthrough experience. I am yeah. a chronic quitter. I'm going to be honest with you. The ending sequence of tears of the kingdom is probably the best in the entire series. It is man. And, and, and when I start to hit the lull in the game, where I realized I was like, okay, I've done everything just about that's new in this game. 
I've done every dungeon. I've gotten all the all the extra stuff. You know, everything left was just Breath of the Wild to me. And I talked about this in part two, where the game sort of hit a lull for me because I, I had already basically explored this world, and all that was left was what I had already explored. But then I played the ending, and it totally like revitalized interest in the game because the ending was so fucking good. Like, you have to play it, Megan. Like, it is yeah. really made made both oh. of us cry, and we're grown ass men. <laughs> yes, yeah, I cry. I mean, if you're not crying at a video game, well, what's funny is I cried. Tell you, man, not even because like it was necessarily like sad, but or even necessarily that like the emotional storytelling got to me, but it was the combination of emotional storytelling with the music and it hit me and it hit me hard. Like I was just like, wow, like just, ugh. man, um, have you gotten to the part? Have you completed all the tears, the dragon tears? No, but I know what happened. Okay. Oh yeah. What I happens? Maybe Megan? Oh, I'm just kidding. Don't tell <laughs> me. I don't want to say it aloud in front of Alan. Cause I spoiled it for myself. Oh. And Alan had never played a Zelda game until we played together. So I mean, Raru yeah. turning into a dragon's not that much of a spoiler. Huh? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> which, which one did you play? What? The one on oh. Super Nintendo. Oh, okay. Oh, if you hit a mushroom. <laughs> I'm playing Tears of the Kingdom um, right now as we're talking about it, and I didn't realize that if you hit a mushroom with a Fire Breath Lazal Blade, it will toast it immediately. That's <laughs> pretty like, nice. Yeah. Follows the logic yeah, of if you uh, also... other food. Go ahead, Megan. Is... Yeah. Um, yeah, no, but what I was going to say was I, I haven't finished the game, but I, I'm like 90% of the way. We haven't, I should say, because Alan and I play it together. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, no, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. The only thing that kind of gets me is the depth. Um, it's just something that, like, even though I played through it and Alan played through it, it's just something I never quite fully... I feel like understood as much as I feel like I should have. And I don't know if that makes sense, but like, it just, it felt like a weird kind of added concept at the end for me a little bit. And I, I don't know if that makes sense. And also like Zach is playing through the depths yeah. right now. So it kind of brings my point home, but it feels like well, they, no, they didn't have any other you. way to expand the map. I yes. agree with you wholeheartedly because there's only one specific part of the story that takes place in the depths and it's not very long at all. And there's right. two, there's two temples that are in the sky but other than that, the game doesn't really require you to be in the sky or in the depths. The depths don't help right. with like life expansion and stuff like that, except for one side quest. And the sky, it's just shrines. It, it's it's kind of useless, but at the same time, it's amazing for exploration and side questing. So you kind of you have a little yeah. bit of a give and take because Tears of the Kingdom screams. Fit oh shit. Sorry, I just blew myself up. Tears yeah. of the Kingdom screams finished product. And Breath of the Wild was like a big Yeah. And so this is yeah. everything they It feels to like put. this is just a completed like Breath of the Wild, basically. Yeah. In but, a lot of ways, yeah. Well, what's crazy is that Tears of the Kingdom, I'm certain, takes place in a different season. Like, I'm pretty sure Tears of the Kingdom takes place in like Hyrule Spring, while Breath of the Wild is probably like the uh like the summer. And so everything feels different from the lighting to, you know, the way people interact with the environment, the different crops that are growing. I think that we're in the spring now because, you know, tomatoes are growing around Hyrule and yeah. you're able to keep your hands on carrots a lot easier. And it's just the tiny little differences that make it a phenomenal yeah. sequel. I still no, I think mean, I though, it, it, it implies that time has gone by, but I, I want to say there was the illusion almost of a different world or a, a similar world because like, oh, maybe kind of like the difference between Labrina in the past and Labrina in the present. Right. Or, um, yeah. yeah, like it was like, okay. It, cause I mean, and I don't think the world itself was very different, but it's the way that the game progresses you through the open world that gave it the illusion of being different. And honestly, that's actually brilliant game design. It's could, genius. I mean, Tears of the Kingdom did absolutely mm -hmm. everything they could with mostly the same map. And like you said, Megan, the depths do kind of feel so somewhat like an afterthought because there's just not nearly as much in them. It, it kind of yeah. just feels like, you know, they kind of like put this together. And I mean, props to them. They did what they could with as much time. Well, I say that they, they took like six they years. They took six fucking like, years. What, seven years? <laughs> Almost seven years. I, I guess all the development time just went to like the sandbox mechanics, honestly. 
Oh, for sure. The shit that you can build with uh, Ultra Hand is insane. Yeah. Danielle and I were getting ready to go to sleep. I think it was either last night or the night before, and there was a video on YouTube of like the top 25 best Tears of the Kingdom builds. And, dude, people are building mechas, semi-trucks, giant jets. Bro, it's insane. And they're fully functional. Yeah. It's, Penis it's bots. It's crazy. Penis bots, that's for sure. Yep. Korok Can't, crucifixes. That one was it's funny. Not, it's not a sandbox without a proper dick in it. I mean, exactly. And, oh, and, and, okay. I mean, Megan, I mean, obviously, <laughs> you, you had to torture those Koroks, didn't you? I did a little bit, but only just because after a long time it did irritate me because I do love the Koroks, but that was extremely extra. I will literally why. never forget when Ash, like, this was like a week or two into the game's launch. Ash sends me a fucking clip of him putting a rocket on a Korok and just sending it. And that shit killed me, bro. I, I think it's just everybody on the internet collectively tried that and it became a meme very quickly because it was everybody's first. Yeah, like, do you first... remember it, all the cons? <laughs> It was like everybody's thought, like, oh wait, I have rockets. I can I can strap anything I want to this to this uh to, <laughs> to this Korok backpack. So <laughs> what would happen if oh that's actually hilarious? <laughs> <laughs> oh dude, there the so amount true, of stuff, hunting for Koroks in Tears of the Kingdom is a lot more fun because there's so many more things that you could do yeah. to get to them. And it, it's a really good time because it, like I said, it feels like Tears of the Kingdom finished what Breath of the Wild started, and I'm I'm happy about it. You know, I'm not going to complain. You're never going to hear me gripe about it. I I had gripes about I, I, it. I did hear you gripe about it. I was just about to say. Well, well no, 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 no. I know you heard me gripe quite a bit about it, but you're never going to again because I, I'm on my second playthrough of Tears of the Kingdom right now, and I've kind of grasped uh, and like. I've fully dove into the sandbox aspect of this game and Tears of the Kingdom is the best game I've ever played. It's just, it's so much fun. I just wish that I had played it before Breath of the Wild because there's, there's a lot of similarities that, you know, I, I know I I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering how it's going to be for, for Danielle. Cause I know you mentioned she's playing through Breath of the Wild now and you were going to show her Tears of the Kingdom right after. And I was like, man, I hope playing both of those games back to back isn't going to give her too much fatigue and kind of ruin the experience. Yeah, I don't think, it can kind of so burn because, you out. I don't think so, because when you go straight into the sequel like that, especially with a sequel like Tears of the Kingdom, it's basically like a DLC that takes place five years later. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah. she's going to get to especially have that Especially considering the size experience. of these games. Is it oh, five either. years? I, I feel like it's more than that, because uh, the, the Gerudo child of uh, Hudson and his Gerudo wife, his Ger tall Gerudo mommy... Is, uh, is is like I don't know that kid looks like she might be like eight or nine years old, dude. I don't I don't know, but Link and Zelda haven't changed a bit. They don't look any different. Also, they fucking well, they're Highland. They oh, fucking oh, it's, yeah. it's it's basically confirmed they were living together. At his least. hair tie in the chest, yeah, yeah. I, oh, if, dude, if you've been to his so house sweet. in Hateno, they call it yeah. Zelda's house. She was living with yeah. him. <laughs> And oh, you can only sleep together. in beds which are owned in Tears of the Kingdom or like in an inn. So obviously that's him and Zelda's bed. That's their love making nest. Dude, I'm getting my ass kicked by a tree right I'm now. I'm never saying that again. That was horrible. That. <laughs> but their love nest? I was yeah, say please ash. don't ever say that again. <laughs> I don't. Oh, God, I hate these tree fuckers. These are one of the new enemies. And uh, y y you can only. Fight them if you have a, a, a sword type weapon, like a, a blade that can cut them, or you if throw you have fire. At them. Yeah. So I just throw yeah I, I, I throw have, bomb flowers at them. Yeah, I, I've been in a couple situations where like for whatever reason I I didn't all I had were like dull weapons on me, not cutting type weapons. Well, and spears, you know, but like no like sword type weapons. And so I was like, oh okay, yeah, and I don't have any fire either right now. I'm kind of fucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Tears of the Kingdom, man, what else can we say about it? We already dedicated two episodes to it. Uh, we're going to talk about it more uh, here soon. I think Zach and I have talked about doing like a boss ranking episode, and you mentioned something else the other day. Which I wanted I to talk about the dungeons, the temples. The, sorry, no, no, dungeon ranking episode, temples. yeah. But you also yeah. mentioned something the other day that, but, that I think was different, and I was like, yeah, let's do that. 
but I don't remember. Oh, about the lore. You said you wanted to do a Zelda game on lore or Zelda episode yeah, on lore. Yeah, a Zelda episode on lore featuring like every game in it. Place yeah, place. it wasn't just a Tears of the Kingdom type thing. Um, yeah, can we add soundtracks into that? That would be so cool, like ranking Ooh. soundtracks from Ooh. the Zelda games. We, we we should do a bonus round where we talk about um, Zelda songs. Like I, I soundtracks that just, made us cry the most. <laughs> you, you, no, you literally just gave me an idea because we've done dungeons, we've done bosses, uh, and I was trying to think of what other kind of lists or rankings we could do, uh, short of doing one for like a specific game, like Tears of the Kingdom. But no, like soundtracks, like that would be perfect. Like a, like a top five soundtracks or or something um, from the Zelda series. We should do that. It. Sounds like a good idea. Midna's Lament is going to be number one. Oh, for sure. Thank you very much. Midna's Lament or uh, the... Okay, you haven't gotten to the end of the game yet, but the music from the final boss of this game is one of my favorites Ooh. in the entire series. The, the music and the final well, sequence I listen, I, is what got to me. Yeah, well, y'all know how I am. I'm an, I'm an audiophile, so I definitely listened to the soundtrack. I just didn't I just didn't finish it. But yeah, I definitely could feel the stylistic changes in the end of the soundtrack there that just blew my mind and i was like oh which we've been talking about picking it back up i just haven't picked it back up because i've been as i said consumed by sebastian sallow and it's fine everything is fine <laughs> so uh the the uh yeah the um the final fall i think i'm already gonna i'm just gonna go ahead and say it the final fall is probably my number one zelda track but uh which is a oh, reprisal really? of the tears of the kingdom main theme uh featuring elements of zelda's lullaby and even the original zelda and it's so good, but yeah. Um, you mentioned Sebastian Salo. It's a perfect segue into one of our other games, uh, Hogwarts Legacy. <laughs> yes. I will be silent because I know nothing about this game. I know, I know, Zach. You you despise Harry Potter, apparently. I do. Yes. Which I don't understand why, but whatever. Good okay. for you, bro. Yes. Uh, first, before we get into anything, I, uh, I I don't agree with J.K. Rowling using her platform to. I don't know, just to die on this hill. I, I don't know if I think that she actually hates trans people, but... Yeah. But I just... If she could just shut I don't up. Think she, I she don't just, think she hates them. She just disagrees. But she disagrees vehemently, and because of her influence, it comes off extremely shitty. And it sucks because, like... Best I, said in the words of Dolly Parton, uh -huh. um, I'm paid to be an entertainer. I'm not paid to be a politician. I think that she just, you know, like, good for you. That's your personal opinion, and everyone's entitled to it, but, like, for the love of God, we get it. Yeah, it's like she just really wants to die on this hill. And it's like when you're a public figure, I don't know, you should put a little bit more care into what you say and not alienating your fan base. Because, I mean, let's be real, she right. alienated a huge portion of her fan base. Um, you know, because Harry Potter always kind of, I think, did appeal to progressives in a lot of ways. Um, so it's just such a weird, weird hill for her to die on. Um, again, like I think that I don't think that she necessarily hates trans people. It's just that, yeah, I mean, they're, they're I don't know. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Um, that being said, yeah, no, I feel like it just, yeah, it just kind of bugs me because, <laughs> huh, huh. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think I, I think my last thought on this will just be, you know, like even, even as adults, um, that, that should, uh, uh, apply to the childlike wonder and the childlike reminiscence. Of, of a person as an adult or even in children, it should inspire children and, and spark their imaginations. I don't think that political or orientations or anything like that should be involved in something of that manner or, or nature, you know, because for a lot yeah. of people that was, you know, their, their Christmas movie or, you know, a family bonding thing um, or, or something to bond with or, or talk about with people when you're, when you're in an awkward situation and you don't know what to do. You know, I, I don't feel that those types of things should be involved in, in something like that. And I, and it should be pure hearted and, 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 pure in itself and I, I don't think that it should be overshadowed by the opinion of something like that because it's just not fair to to something of that stature and the and you know nature you know so yeah i could it, not have said it better myself for real yeah it's kind of tainted uh, the best way i've heard it said and this is my argument for playing hogwarts legacy for purchasing it okay because i know mm -hmm. i know I, I i i gave some money to the turf but in a system where ethical consumption does not exist i drew a line all right. Same as anyone else. We all have to draw a line somewhere. I drew the line at the wizard game. Um, and, and again, I mean, credit where credit's due. Uh, J.K. Rowling is a very intelligent person. 
Her story is, right. you know, the, the storytelling aspects are... Her storytelling, are, yeah. Ooh, the, the, the lore, the world building, and, and that's really at full display in Hogwarts Legacy, which, as far as I've heard... Absolutely. ...didn't have a lot of creative input directly from her. It's just like it's a world set... It's a story set in the world, right? Honestly, it's kind of cool. I, I've always said that, like, J.K. Rowling or, 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 you know, the Wizarding World brand could do another story several stories set in this world that doesn't even have to be a, a sequel doesn't even have to follow you know long before cursed child ever came out and yeah. i'm gonna tell you guys like i'm a huge potterhead i used to be obsessed i read me too every yeah. book i was there we at bonded the over it in high release. school i'm 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 literally yeah we did i'm literally in the herald newspaper and i was on some uh news station because i went to a uh a, a, a premiere or, or a, a midnight release of either Half Blood Prince or Deathly Hallows, I can't remember, um, in full costume. So they were like, "Hey, come over here for a picture and like let's do a little interview." So I'm on some I'm on some radio network and I'm in the Herald newspaper for that, and and that's just kind of one of the defining moments. I, I was obsessed with Harry Potter. I would like down to things like the layout of Hogwarts in the movies versus what's described in the books. You know, I just went full mm-hmm. on autistic mode on it. I used to talk about <laughs> nothing but Harry Potter. My, 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 um, my teacher uh, and, and my fourth grade teacher who is Mrs. Lees, who is uh, an amazing woman. I loved her, but um, she, she would, she would give me like projects to do and stuff like to draw something or write something. And it would always be about Harry Potter. And at that time, nobody else in my, my age was actually like reading those books which I thought was interesting. Um, I was in third, fourth grade reading Harry Potter, but nobody else was at that, at, at least where I lived. That was my age. Yeah. Now, Megan, this this is a game that you're very excited about, though. Uh, what? Yeah. Yeah, let, let's talk about Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, no, I feel like um, the, the game was definitely developed by, you know, Potterheads like us who who genuinely love the the Potter universe. And, and I, I was so excited to play it, man. Like, it was so good. And I feel like it really did a great job of, like, not only, you know, I- expanding upon and putting a, a book media into a game. I know we kind of talked about this in The Witcher a little bit as well last week. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like it took the, the energy and the 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 like beauty of of the books and really put them into a game and set them back in time right like this is before Harry Potter is born this is before Harry Potter exists um and I feel like they did such a good job at it and it like the the soundtrack is beautiful the game itself just plays really well like I was I, it it felt like it like no matter where I went there was something to do like we were talking about last week right and I just I don't know it was so good and I was so happy with it and I was kind of worried you know when I first heard about it but then I just kind of was like you know what fuck it let's do it and uh Alan and I got each other new Xboxes for Christmas so we we got to play it on the latest generation console which was so fun um, and yeah, I just, I don't even, I, I have no, no cons really. I, I fell in love with it. Um, actually I know that, um, Zach, you're not really a Potterhead, so I know you're, you're staying silent. Um, but Ash, what house are you? Oh, I, I wanted to talk about this. Okay. So on Pottermore, when I first did it, everyone expected Ravenclaw, but I was actually a Gryffindor. Really? And I'm I, a Ravenclaw. But that being said... When I took the quiz in um, Hogwarts Legacy, I got Slytherin. So, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I've just changed over the years, or maybe I was answering in yeah. a certain way. I don't know. It kind of works with my character, though. Like my custom character isn't me. I actually picked a girl because I just always pick girls now when I do uh, when I do cu- custom characters. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I, I like uh, I like playing as a girl. Girls are hot, you know. So I uh, is that like a sign that I'm trans? I don't know. I'm kidding. Probably not. Um, that would actually oh be Lord. that would actually be really funny if like a Harry Potter game caused me to like discover that. Right. <laughs> I, I think that's the only reason why I even wanted to say that was because like the irony, the irony of it. Right. Yeah. But my name is Ashley. I wouldn't have to change my name. Um, <laughs> But I heard that there was a, tra- a trans character in this game, actually. Ooh. 
I think there's one like student or something, and it was like it was just one of those things that like felt like a box that they had to tick, you know, be- specifically because of Rowling's views, you know. It was like, oh, was okay. it um, what's her name? I don't know. Um, the one that owns the uh three broomsticks. Oh, okay. I I think it was Is a it student, Aura? but I don't know. Uh, I'd have to go look it up. Well, and, Isidore was a student. And I'll, I've I've barely played the game, mind you. I've played through. See, I bought it shortly after it came out. And it sucks, too, because I was really excited about it. I really wanted to talk about it on the podcast. Um, but we had a lot going on at the time. And also, you know, the backlash, the trans community, which, I mean, we stand in solidarity with. Like, honestly, like, you know, again, like, we're very um, much a, uh, you know, allies, uh, collateral gaming, you know, we we love our trans listeners, we love our gay listeners. I mean, I I kind of fit into the LGBT community myself. So, <laughs> um, okay. oh, Therona, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, not Isadora, Therona, okay, Therona Ryan. But um, yeah, I mean, the game itself is a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's everything I kind of wanted out of a Harry Potter game. It's it's exactly what's advertised. Yeah. It's an open world Harry Potter game, and, and it's an action RPG. Uh, you can uh, play through and you know cast different spells, and you'll learn different ones throughout the year. Like I said, I made a I made my my custom character who's a Slytherin, and um, I I I wanted maybe even to make my character evil. That's kind of what I'm thinking at the moment because I heard that you can I do I mean, I use Crucio so much on fucking goblins, it's fine. Yeah, I heard that Sebastian Salo, I think there's a quest line of his that teaches you the unforgivable curses and I'm like, I'm there. And yes. apparently there's no uh, in-game consequences for that. <laughs> no, there is not. Speaking of, why did they have to put so much fucking riz on Sebastian goddamn Salo in Ominous Gaunt? I cannot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean that he's such a likable character. I think like, and I'm a Slytherin too, so and it like, kind of works. Why would they do all these fucking romantic ass things if you can't fucking romance anybody? Like, bro, quit flirting with me like this. Well, they are kids. Maybe that could be why. Um, I mean, but I mean, they could. There's just... there's too much riz for them to be just kids. Let's be so for real right now. Too much riz. Especially with, a, like, I don't know, this is probably the most niche thing I'm ever going to say on this podcast, but, like, I don't know if y'all saw The Magicians, but, like, it that made me think incredible. of that. Like, I love that show. Yes, I don't know if you, if, if you'll get that, that reference, Ash, but, yeah, there's, there's, like, a whole thing of, like, magic in that. So, I'm like, okay, well, if this is here, what about fucking, like, Harry Potter, bro? And then I play fucking Hogwarts, and there's Sebastian Fellow just existing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, who knows? I might pick it up. Why not? It's an it's an action RPG, and why not? I I know you're not the biggest Potterhead, but I really feel like you would like it. I mean, even if you're not like, a, and I'll say this for our listeners listeners too, um, even if you're not like the biggest Potterhead, it's it's an interesting game, and the 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 style of game, the the controls. Um, there's a lot of things to really enjoy about the game, and you can kind of make Hogwarts your own. Um, and and there's a lot of like really good story in it and the lore of course is huge and I feel like there's just so much that like is to be enjoyed in this game like I'm not completely finished with it yet and I'm at 70 hours so damn okay yeah 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 it it's kind of disappointing that I actually I'm not have been into this as I as I should have been because like I, as a as a Potterhead you know like I haven't even seen the latest Fantastic Beasts movie still I haven't seen the, the last one really? with, with Matt Mickelson. I don't know why. Why it's is so it that good. there's a Harry Potter movie that's out that I haven't even been motivated enough to watch? Why is there a Harry Potter game that's out that I'm not motivated to play all the way through? And the only thing I can think is that, you know, like it's the whole business with JKR and the, the, the her, her, yeah. her whole, you know, her whole thing, her whole agenda. It's like, I don't know. It, it, it's kind of poisoned it a little bit. It's left a bad taste in my mouth. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm the same, you know, like even, like, even if, if you're not like someone that's an ally and I know we're going a little bit off topic here, but it's just something that I feel like I need to say. It's like, it costs zero dollars and zero cents to be a nice person and to be, yeah. you know, like, like, Even if you don't agree I'm, with it necessarily, just yeah, just be a right. decent person. Like, a person, call them whatever pronouns or name they want to be called, because it it doesn't hurt you at all to do it. 
Yeah, I well, not, I mean, not even necessarily that. Just, like, if it if it bugs you that much, walk away from the situation. You don't have to, like, like there's already so much nastiness and, and meanness and just grossness going on in the world. Like, that's the last thing we need is to all hate on each other. Like, I know that makes me sound so hippie, and I don't really give a shit. But I'm just, I, I'm not the type of person to hate on somebody. And, you know, like, maybe that's going to come back and bite me in the ass. That's fine. I, you know, I give a lot of people the benefit of the doubt. But, like, I'm not just going to sit here and hate on somebody for what they believe in or what they do or what they love. You know, like, that's, that's you. And, you know, if, like, I'm going to love you as a human, right? Because, like, obviously there are some um, exclusions to this. But, um everybody is born with a heart and two lungs and a couple pounds of meat inside their head that dictates how they think as a person, right? Like if, if it weren't for that couple pounds of meat in our skull, we would all think the same. And that's the way our neurons fire. So why are we being so mean to each other when we're literally all the same anatomically? You so fucking for real. Well, well said because yeah, yeah. Well fucking said because we, yeah, we're, we're just here for whatever amount of time we're here. Who knows what happens after the fact as far as I'm concerned, nothing. We're does. here for the human experience. Like, like, why try and taint someone else's human experience? We don't know how many years we have on this planet. Why do you have to be so callous them towards someone else whenever it's not your business? Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, just, just fucking be nice to each other. You know, it doesn't matter whether you agree with it or not. Just, just humor a person, and if you can't walk away from the situation, but don't like be an asshole. And honestly, like my uh, my trans homies are cool people. You know. Like I I uh, I, I definitely uh, appreciate you know those friends, and I think that they honestly even have unique perspectives in life that you know, and and there's there are so many stories that can be told with that. So, but yeah, uh, I guess we'll get off of our soapbox and and back on topic. All right, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I definitely feel like it was such, it was a great release for 2023 and I feel like it was something that was perfectly set in in the year and it was something that we all it was a nice like little breather um in the midst of of the beginning of the year last year. And it was just I mean, I didn't pick up it until the end of the year and it was a great Christmas present. It was honestly one of the best Christmas presents I've ever received. So, um it was really fun to to play that and uh, Alan actually got it for me. Um how when did we get Hogwarts anymore? When did we get Hogwarts? It was Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. So we played it all day on Thanksgiving. We we made our dinner and then we we hung out on Thanksgiving and played Hogwarts and it was really fun. I feel like that was like a core memory for me, and I feel I, I hope that everybody has the same experience when playing that 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 they get a core memory out of playing that game, like they do with others. Yeah, I I picked it up for the first time in a while yesterday because I, I played it shortly after it came out a little bit, but we had a lot of podcast stuff going on, so I didn't I didn't really have time for it. Um, but I picked it up, you know, I, I got through like most of the tutorial stuff. I was enjoying it, and then I, I picked it up again yesterday, and I honestly had a blast. I was really vibing with the game. Uh, just having a good time going around, learning spells. Uh, I was, I was actually, I'm, 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 I'm probably. This is probably the very, very beginning of the game, but I went through the section where you go through the restricted section of the library with Sebastian. Oh yeah. So. Oh my sweet summer child, there is much to come. <laughs> that, that, that is, that is as far through the story as I've gone. Although you know me, you know I'm trying to complete stuff along the way as well. Um, yeah. You know, I was looking for gobstones and and just finding things around in the world. And, you know, and, and I was honestly really, really cool with it. And they even have like a system where uh, I think Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey did this as well, where like you can have a, uh, an, and in God of War too, God of War Ragnarok, where you can have a piece of equipment, but you can make it look like any other piece of equipment. I think it's like transmorgan. Oh, yeah, the illusion. Or mm-hmm. something. And mm-hmm. that actually, it, it makes sense in the context of Harry Potter that you could have equipment and and transform it into transfigure it into some other type of a uh, uh, of equipment to look like something else and yeah it can be wearing PJs but look like you're put together love that for me well and like I appreciate being able to have like higher levels of gear but still being able to be like lore accurate for instance or look like a piece of gear that I really liked um, I, I want to s- time accurate as well time accurate I want to say yeah that like the 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 fact that this is a much earlier piece in history is probably why like Hogwarts is a little bit more lax and like students can kind of just wear whatever it seems. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that's, that's like my no one head. Beth and I, when you're running around in a, in a death eater cape, it's fine. Everything's fine. Also, also uh, I want to mention too, that the whole game map is actually like completely original. 
Um, it doesn't rely on um, the movie's version of Hogwarts, for instance, although it's very no, similar. I've seen to that it. it's been completely redone. And I think that's fantastic. It's really cool. Because I know, like, I think Order of Phoenix and um, and uh, Half-Blood Prince, which I've played through all of the Harry Potter games, and there's an episode somewhere out there on all of the Harry Potter games, because I think, like, the first three were brilliant. The uh, Goblet of Fire I was really, really hyped for, and it was just a big disappointment. Order of the Phoenix and Half-Blood Prince were okay. Where did you put the the Goblet of Fire? And Harry, you put your name in the Goblet of Fire. Yeah, and then um, Deathly Hallows Part 1 and 2, the games, were just, they turned them into third-person shooters, which was weird. But, like, the first three games are, like, honestly, like, they, they feel like Zelda games. I love them. Um, but uh, where was I going with this? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, I don't know. But, yeah, oh, the, okay, the map, okay, the map. The map. Yeah. yeah, so Order of the Phoenix and Half-Blood Friends, I think, did, like, a one-to-one -one recreation of the actual movie map. Um. And they didn't use that map. So this was something completely new that was, I think, inspired by the film still. Um, I, I think like Fantastic Beasts, maybe it's meant to take place in the film universe. I'm not too sure. but Or, or maybe they, they finally did their own thing and just did like something just straight from the books. I think so. I f it feels more book accurate than it does movie accurate. I mean, you've got... Um, I mean, this isn't spoiling anything, but you have, you know, Professor Weasley. Um, so, I mean, you, you know, you have the, the ancestors of, of some of the characters, um, yeah, I remember in Professor this game, Weasley. but, uh, yeah, but yeah. So, I mean, I mean, there's not much difference there, but <laughs> I feel like it has to be more book accurate than it does movie accurate. Actually, Alan's in the room, babe, do you feel that the, uh, Hogwarts legacy is more movie accurate or book accurate? Uh, I'd say both. I mean, the only book I ever read was The Prisoner of Azkaban. Oh. So. Well, we watch it every year. Is it Prisoner of Azkaban? Yeah. Yeah. That's the best. Incidentally, that is the best film of the of the franchise. Yeah. The House? The What House? The House. Oh, yeah. Where you go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't spoil too much. Ash hasn't played too much. It's a side <laughs> quiz. Let's do. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess... We'll, uh, we, we, we've been going on about wizard shit long enough, and, and, and Zach is probably grating his teeth right now. Uh, no, I'm, I'm chasing sorry, deer. I, just love I can't catch a fucking deer to save my life, dude. I, I, I'm watching no, you you're killing this them, whole bro. time. I've, I've been watching your, your stream here, and uh, just kind of while you. I'm talking about this. And it's, yeah. Uh, Super Mario RPG. That's the final game on our list. I have had a really good time with this game. I never played the original, but... I loved Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. I loved Bowser's Inside Story. That dove just ruined that for me, and I'm <laughs> actually really mad they're watching me play this and I'm trying to catch a deer. But Super Mario RPG is playful. It's wonderful. I love the characters like Malo. You get to play with Princess Peach and Bowser, and it's just it's a really fun turn-based RPG that deserved a remake, and Nintendo has really done it justice. I was surprised it got one. Because I know, th yeah, like I know that there's some licensing issues with it because uh, it was it was co-developed by. Hold on, let me put the game real quick. I know because, for instance, uh, the remake of Super Star Saga did not include the reference from Super Mario RPG, and me many people suspected that that was a. It was Square. That's what I was okay. That, that's what I thought it was. Um, many people suspected that it was a uh, licensing issue, and, and that was why they didn't include. I, I think I want to say um, Gino or Geno. I don't know how to fuck to say his name. Was was originally in Superstar Saga, but it, it's been a minute since I played the original. But well, I played a little bit for the podcast too. But maybe I didn't get that far. But anyway. Going off topic, uh, this was one of my first opportunities to play through the game as well. I'd heard a lot about it. Uh, in a lot of ways, I hear that it's actually kind of the the spiritual predecessor to Paper Mario in particular, but also oh, the Mario yeah, and I Luigi definitely see that. RPG games. Yeah, uh, I think it definitely has a lot more similarities to Paper Mario, but I it's one of those games that I'd always missed. Um, I tried to play several times. I think I bought it on the virtual console even. Uh, once and I just never got very far in it, uh, but I don't think I ever got past the, like the tutorial area. I don't know why. Maybe like, to I be was... honest, 
I, uh-huh. I like it a lot, but it definitely has a very different flavor from the other Mario and Luigi RPG games. And I think why that is is because it's kind of slow going with as far as the pacing. Um, the world building is really fun, you know, chasing the stars and trying to kick Smithy out of Bowser's castle. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a really cool premise, but it's very slow. And I'm not a huge fan of the combat, um, but it is a good story. And it's very just it's charming. I guess that's a good that's a good way to see it. Yeah. I haven't found Link or Samus uh, oh. yet in this game, and I'm very much looking forward to the time where I run into one of them. Oh yeah, um, I know you can meet them in like one of the ends. I don't think I've come across it either because I've been waiting for it. And I heard that the references are still in the remake. So yeah, I had never played the game very far before, but the remake came out, and honestly, I was planning to do an episode on it. I remember yeah. I, I I bought the game and it came out while I was in Georgia with you uh, when when I went to go see you for the the wedding, and um, I was playing some of this you know like while we were uh, you know just sitting at the at the uh, the Airbnb or, uh, or or even like on the the flight home I was playing some Super Mario RPG uh, and I was, and the game had just came out and I was I was trying to find time to play it. And yeah, I was just really getting into it. One thing I noticed about the game, and I, I, I guess this is kind of opposite to your experience, because I felt the game is very fast paced. Honestly, I felt like I went through everything way too quickly. I was like, wow, this is like, I'm already got like four, four stars. I, I either have three or four stars now. And I was like, wow, okay, that, that was fast. Um, but I, I was playing this game concurrently with Persona 5 Tactica, uh, which is a, a strategy RPG uh, set in the Persona 5 universe. And I, uh, so it was kind of an interesting comparison between both of these games. But I remember with Super Mario RPG, like I just kept moving and kept moving. And I finally got to the part where uh, I went through uh, Booster's Tower. I got Peach as a party member. And then I went to like that, like star area, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, yeah. So I, okay. So does the game end when you collect all seven stars? I'm not Is sure. that the end of the game? Because I have like five stars. I've already done all of that that you're talking about. Yeah. I, I, I think so. I don't know. I haven't played through the game before, so I don't know if it ends right at seven stars or if there's a little bit more, if that's like right before the final boss fight or what. I guess that'll be a surprise. I hope not, because I would have paid like, what, $50 for like seven hours of gameplay? Dude, that's shit. <laughs> it, 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 it's very fast. Like I said, um, it, it you just, yeah, like I said, you know, you get through it. And a lot of the mechanics do feel like they're a little bit better done in the later, like in the, the Paper Mario games or the Mario and Luigi RPG games. It kind of just felt like this was their first attempt at an RPG. But it is a, a really, really fun uh, RPG featuring the Mario characters. The story is so good. Um, I think yeah. this was probably our, like our first time that Bowser was actually a protagonist. Yeah. And, 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 and developed the persona that he would have in the RPG games where he's noted to be quite a bit lighter and more comical. And I like this Bowser better. Yeah, because I never really took him seriously as a villain. <laughs> so I'm glad that they kind of lean more into the comical, lighthearted side of Bowser. It makes me makes me a little happier. Bro, you need to play Bowser's Inside Story. I'm telling you. It will, whatever your view is of a Bowser, it will, it will transform it. And, and you'll have an even more intimate understanding of what it's like to be Bowser and to be inside of Bowser in a non-sexual Stop. way. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> At the same time, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I've always so- wanted to be inside of Bowser. <laughs> Maybe Bowsette. Ooh. Or Bowser inside of me, maybe. Oh, okay. Whoa. All right. So thanks, guys. This has been Collateral Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that would actually, I, th- I think that would destroy me. I mean, like, just thinking maybe about not. about that Koopa dick. Oh. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. It's been a great year for games, and... Honestly, I if 2024 is anything close to what 2023 gave us, I'm going to be very excited. And marking another year with this podcast, recording and talking about good games, bad games, and everything in between with you guys for the past couple of years now, it's just, it's very special. And it feels I'm, weird I'm, that it's been years, bro. I know. Yeah. He and I talked You're about Metroid me. Prime in 
it like 2020? Yeah. And, and Megan and I have been going on longer than that. I mean, you jo- you and Alan joined on, um, let's see, we, we were and doing, who? it was Star Wars, I think. Um, or was it Star yeah, Wars or was no, it God, and of I War, remember, God of War? I think it was. I know I you were on both you of them. I posting about it. I just don't remember yeah. which one was first. Um, I think it was I God don't... of War. Oh my God. I think it was God of War, but now I, d- I don't remember. <laughs> oh my God, Megan. No worries. Either uh, either Fallen Order or or God of War. That's how long we've been doing it. Zach and I have been doing it since that Metroid Prime trilogy episode. Man, it's crazy that when, like, yeah, it's been literal years. Um, and this year was a fantastic year for gaming. I mean, you've, I've heard it everywhere, except from edgy contrarians on the internet that like to say that it's 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 it was a terrible year just because they they want to farm attention if you don't think that this was a great year for gaming i I don't know what to tell you because there were so many games different kinds of games that came out i mean like even just going like to the ones that like we didn't talk about right uh and and some of these i actually did play yeah we'll we'll go and do a brief mention of everything else and let me know fallen order i just looked it up (laughs) was fallen order was the first one yeah i i I, um i just looked it up but uh or no you just looked it up <laughs> Megan you threw me off <laughs> <laughs> right so a, a couple of the other games that i played i think that these deserve at least a, a brief mention uh and guys let me know if you've played any of these games or if, if anything else came out this year that i didn't mention um that you played but let's see advance wars 1 plus 2 reboot camp in many ways, Advance Wars is responsible for making Fire Emblem popular uh, in the United States, in the West. So uh, I, and as a fan of, of tactical RPGs, which Zach, you introduced me to, I, I really oh, wanted yeah. to check that out. So I played through at least the tutorial section, had a lot of fun with that one. Um, and then uh, Street Fighter VI, honestly, I wanted to do an episode on it, but... Uh, we just had a lot of going on at the time. And I don't know if I had really had anyone to talk about it with me. But, I mean, specifically because we we recently did an episode on fighting games and talked about a lot of Street Fighter. Uh, uh, Street Fighter Six. I purchased, uh, I, I pre-ordered, actually, played it on release. I was really impressed with the, uh, there was actually a single-player mode uh, where you kind of create your own character and you just go around town and every character in the game is somebody you can fight. I thought that that was really ballsy. It's like every person in the city is like a fightable character. Like, you know, you see that old granny standing next to a shop, you can fight her. You know, just some dude walking across, Jay walking across the street, you can fight him. Everybody in that city is ready to fight you and that's that's just balls to the wall. You know what we didn't end up talking about? Huh. That I, I wanted to, to just give a moment to. Um, Starfield. Yeah. We didn't sucked. end up talking about that. Did you play it? A little bit. Um, it's trash. Yeah, no, I, I I like played it for like a couple of seconds and I, 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 I will have to agree. I, I was not I was kind of uh, I was a little disappointed. I, I, Dude, I it, kind of I kind of went into it, I guess, maybe expecting a little bit of like a no man's sky kind of thing, and maybe that's why I was disappointed. Uh huh. And, and it, it just, I don't know, it just didn't feel right. Bro, that game is probably Bethesda's biggest whiff. I feel bad for them, but like that That's game... That's what they get for not working on fucking Elder Scrolls, goddammit. Like, that game flopped so hard, dude. That That's one of the hardest... Because they were talking about how it was going to be their best game ever, and how it was going to be one of the best games ever created, and then just, boop, dead. Comes out... Absolute I, trash. I didn't get a chance to play Starfield. I don't know if it's gotten better with updates either, but I I heard many of the, the criticisms that came out. I, I think I decided pretty early on that we weren't going to talk about it because, like, yeah, the, the, the game just, oh, man, it was another uh, it was another cyberpunk or, or a No Man's Sky, like you mentioned earlier. Like, like but early No Man's Sky, you know, in terms of... I was going to say No Man's Sky and is a really good game. What what happened? What? <laughs> yeah, no, no Man's Sky is great now. In fact, when we covered it back in our first season, I think it was our very, like, I think it was, like, the third episode we ever did. Yeah. Um, we actually had nothing but positive things to say about that. And that was going back to, like, the original game like like when the game first came out 
we I, I actually defended it. And we talked about that on the podcast. And even when we did the episode, it had been quite a few years. And they're still making updates. Man, that was like five years ago or something. And, and they're still releasing updates to No Man's Sky. Like, holy shit. <laughs> They will continue to. They said that at the Game Awards. They said they're going to continue. And then they also have another style of game in development, I think. I, I know that there's another game in development, and I can't remember what the fuck it was called. Fires of something or something of fire. It's, yeah, it's actually a it fantasy. Yeah, it looked really cool. It's a fantasy version of No Man's Sky. Uh, just you yeah, know, one planet, Which is wild. Which th- means they can like zero in. And, and the like, planet's like ever expanding, too. Ooh, yeah. yeah that sounds incredible. Yeah. Um, but well, yeah, Starfield. Yeah. What a disappointment. Not even a mention. You know, when you hear about games that are coming up for Game of the Year, Starfield wasn't even a mention. Everybody was like, nah. Because there were a couple other games, you know, that popped up that were like, okay, these could be nominees. Um, and, 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 you know, because so many games came out here this year, they had to make a few exceptions. Uh, Starfield was just Yeah, never I feel like considered. there was a lot of honorable mentions this year. I feel like it was, this past year, it was just a really good year for gaming. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, let's see, Street Fighter VI, uh, one more thing I wanted to mention is that Hazel and I played that together. She loves playing Street Fighter with me on the arcade. I have this, like, little Aww. mini arcade unit. Um, but uh, we, we, we played uh, a, a few rounds of Street Fighter VI on my PS5 uh, and had an abs- absolute blast with it. It was, it was really fun. Um, the, the, the combat is fluid. Uh, man, we actually have had a lot of good fighting games because between that, Mortal Kombat 1, which I haven't even had a chance to play, it's and all right. Tekken 8, which just came out this year. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just been, wow. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of... Uh... Oh, Megan mentioned Avatar. Dude, If have you played it? If you've played it, mention it. Okay, no, I haven't, but I, I didn't know if we were going <laughs> to... Do it no, do it. I was like, let me check the group chat. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, um, I haven't played it yet, but I've been seeing a lot of people talking about it. And I know it came out kind of later December, um, and, and that just didn't really coincide with our, our schedule for the season, unfortunately. So could possibly be in the future. I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, I, I, I had seen that some people, I heard they was like 50-50, so I didn't know if y'all had had any thoughts about it um, at all. Yeah. I haven't touched it. I haven't played it. I thought, I'm a big Avatar fan, so. No, yeah. Seriously, guys, go for it right now. Now is your time to talk about any games, by the way, um, that you guys have played. Because uh, I'm certainly going to go through uh, the ones that I did very quickly. Uh, <laughs> I'm saying this as we're like over an hour, but hell, we're vibing. Um, Avatar was one that I was kind of interested in because, um, I mean, I know that the, the, the first movie is basically just dances with wolves in space, but... It's a good, it's a it's a cool technical achievement. The story is pretty fun. Um, I liked the second one too, and uh, the Wave Water. So the and the Avatar universe is certainly something really cool and like something I'd love to see. You know, like an open world game set in, and that that that's what I understand that this game is the frontiers of Pandora. But um, yeah. I, I I guess I just wasn't you know like I said a lot of stuff going on. We were talking about already spending money left and right on other games and other things. So it just wasn't really on my radar, but I did want to hear, you know, whether or not it was good or bad. And yeah, no, I, w- I would like to play it, but I just, I haven't really heard too much about it. Like uh, they were, they, it wasn't as, as hyped as some of the other games this year. So I was like, mm. I, I heard it was kind of disappointing actually, but um, okay. kind of mediocre, but um, a, an open world game set in Pandora sounds dope as hell. And, you know, it could be another situation where it's like, you know, this might be a game that appeals to some people and could be a lot of fun. Um, let me see. Baldur's Gate 3, we talked about that. Um, did you guys have any other games that you played this year? Um, I don't know. I mean, I I wanted to play uh, Call of the Mountain, but I never got the chance to. Um, oh. I know that we were kind of talking about that a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the I'm DLC. surprised you didn't. <laughs> Horizon. Well, because I, I don't have either. a that. That's one thing. Even in 2024, I'm still not a. Uh, oh yeah, duh. A PS5 owner, unfortunately. Right. Um, so I, I have not done it. Um, yeah. So Alan and I, we we ended up getting a really good deal on um, new Xboxes um, from a friend, uh, and and he was getting rid of his because he traded out uh, for PC. Um, so we we're we're, um, we're saving right now for one. Um, we're, that's actually a definitive plan for this year. Um, but right now we just we we're enjoying our new Xboxes and then you know still playing on the the, the Switch. Um, Nintendo, I love you. 
the OLED's cool, but I, I'm ready to see what's next. <laughs> I want our next console, and honestly, Ash, I think we're going to get some Metroid Prime 4 this year. I, I don't know. I'm hoping, I'm hoping so. Hopefully. Hopefully. Y'all we forget get I'm a Metroid news. fan too. Same as his mommy. Nathan, <laughs> mommy. I bet we're going to get some Metroid Prime 4 this year. Oh, man. Samus is mommy. Be so Samus fucking is Isaac is daddy and Samus is mommy. Yes, the space parents. <laughs> um, so uh, one other game I played this year. I actually, this is another one I wanted to do an episode on because we've talked about this franchise before. Assassin's Creed Mirage. Um, I did play a little ways yeah. into it. I at least got to like the main section of the game where like you get into the city and you start doing stuff. Um, didn't play very much beyond that though, but I, I love that Assassin's Creed is doing a return to form that like concurrent to the open world RPG games that they're doing. We're also getting just kind of more of a traditional experience, but with modernized controls that we see in the RPG games. So uh, good on them for that, for releasing a, uh, an Assassin's Creed title that isn't an open world action RPG and actually doing it pretty well and not charging full price for it. Good move, Ubisoft. I'm 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 genuinely surprised, actually. Yeah. I no, I, I get that. It. Yeah, a step in the right direction. I, honestly, like I think that 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 was a good thing that they did. Um, and I mentioned it earlier, but Persona Five Tactica, that was a, a, a another game uh, that I was playing with Super Mario RPG at the time. They both came out, I think, the same day, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I think. So I think you're right, if if not within like 48 hours of each other. I remember that, Modern Warfare 3, which I've been playing quite a bit of, and we, we did an episode on that. Um, and um, whatchamacallit, uh, uh, Naruto, all came out within like the span of like a, a, a week or two of each other. And I was try I, I bought all of those games and uh, <laughs> I was kind of proud of myself for managing Bro. to afford that and being uh, in Georgia for a wedding. Um uh, and, and, and yeah, I know. I'm sad y'all didn't come up north. <laughs> well, I couldn't. I had just gotten a new wife. Yeah. That's fair. But I mean, we're only um three hours away <laughs> in North Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a four bedroom house. <laughs> oh, God. I'm just kidding. Do. I'm getting we do sick. Need to, we do need to come up there soon. Heck yeah, you do. Yeah, Persona 5 Tactica was a lot of fun. Again, just uh, another tactical RPG or or strategy RPG, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, But Persona, and I fell in love with Persona 5 this year. That was a game I played for the first time this year. Um, And I played through all of Persona 5 Royal and just fell in love with it. I I put like over 200 hours into that game, and it wasn't even a podcast game. That's rare. Um, And uh, for for me to put that much time into a game that we aren't talking about um yeah so that's dedication right there brother that is um yeah so that that came out and i I actually i was having a lot i got quite a ways through persona 5 tactica Uh, again just featuring the same characters from the persona 5 video game and uh putting them in a strategy rpg setting it's kind of a, a strategy rpg light uh in a lot of ways You know, just something that's very simple if you're unfamiliar to the genre. Uh, And then uh, what else came out this year? Uh, Naruto X Boruto, that's another Naruto X Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections. That's another game I was super excited for because I'm a huge fan of the Ultimate Ninja Storm series. But we actually have an episode coming out on that later, uh, I think uh, next month. So you'll, you'll hear my full thoughts on Naruto Storm Connections as a huge fan of the Ultimate Ninja Storm series. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1 came out this year. Starfield came out. Uh, Diablo 4, Pikmin 4, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, and Alan Wake 2. Um, those are all games that I felt would have been worth a mention if any of us had played them, but none of us did. So as far as I know... <laughs> I'm tempted to give Alan Wake 2 a shot. I've heard that the game's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, from what I've seen, it's beautiful. I think most of these were game of the year nominees. Um, I would have loved to play the new Mario game. I just, a lot of stuff came out and I had to make some decisions. <laughs> Is it online co-op? Uh, Mario Rose wonder. That's a great question. Yeah. I've been wondering that since it came out. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry guys. It's almost my bedtime. Uh, yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up here in a bit. Um, let's see. Super Mario brothers. Wonder. 
to Super Mario Brothers. I hate the I hate these clickbait links, like clickbait search results, where they don't actually tell you until you click on the page. Okay, so yes, yeah, Super Mario Brothers Wonder offers both local and online co-op. There you go. Oh, dude, hell yo, Dash, we definitely got to do that, bro, for sure. I'll I'll get it if you want to do cal- if you want to do online co op. Dude, for we sure. should. And I to yeah, be fair, that I, sounds like a blast. I did play the get the demo in GameStop, so I did get to play it a little bit. I thought that the wonder effects were really cool. Kind of a uh, a new innovative way to um just kind of uh hype up these Mario levels, make them a little bit more fun. Megan, uh, get this and do this with us. Okay. <laughs> but. I guess uh, that's it for now. Um, stay tuned for uh, part two of The Witcher, as well as our two-part anniversary special on Fable 1 and Fable 2. Hopefully we can get all of that out uh, within the next few weeks. Uh, and then this month, um, we had a plan. Uh, I still need to decide if we have time to do that i'll need to talk to you guys and kind of figure out what we're doing uh as far as february because we're, we're about a month behind in terms of content um we may need to cut some stuff out or or see how it goes but yeah stay tuned for that very soon definitely uh the witcher 3 part 2 and fable 1 and fable 2 uh as well as at some point i think we're going to be doing a zelda themed bonus round uh, Zach and I have thrown around ideas of either doing the dungeon ranking or like a, an episode on, on Zelda lore. So, um, either way, I think, I think very soon here within this month or the next, we'll, we'll, we'll probably do something with that. Uh, and we've got plenty more coming this season. I, I think the big thing that we, the, the, that we've picked up on this last year <laughs> has been, um, maybe we need to start like recording these, uh, episodes in advance just so that we can make sure we get it on, on time. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, if, if we get like a month ahead of schedule next season, we'll be we'll be gravy. We'll be doing really well. Like I think we should start recording these maybe a month in advance, just because it's so hard for all of us to find time in our schedules. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's just the result of being adults. For sure. I mean, I've even had to cancel things Very, sometimes yeah. <laughs> because of yeah. So, um, but yeah, twenty twenty three was a fantastic year for gaming. Twenty twenty four is shaping up to be pretty good. Um, let's see, this year I've already been playing uh, Persona 3 Reload, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy, and I'm highly anticipating the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, um, which I played the demo for last night, and I'm so ready for this game. It's so good. Megan, we got to play through the, uh, I, I got to play through the Nibelheim section of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Nibelheim? Good. Yeah. <laughs> Nibbleheim, not Niflheim. <laughs> I need to play. I need to play. Uh, I need to play some Final Fantasy. There's a lot of good content. Dude, yes, you do. Start with seven. That's what I did. Final Fantasy seven is a goddamn masterpiece. Uh, I've played the original. I think that's what I started with too. I've played the remake of it, which is actually more of a sequel than it is a remake, uh, and it only forms one third of the actual story content. Um, with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth picking up after that and covering uh, the next part of it, and then presumably we're going to get a third game of the trilogy that's going to that's going to um, finish off. But I, I kind of feel like by the end of Rebirth, we'll actually see them going off the rails with the story. I freaking hope so. We'll we'll see. We'll see because right because like the whole question is: Is Aerith going to die? I don't know. Is she? <laughs> I mean, Probably. shit. We'll find out. Yeah, but. Yeah, guys, uh, those are all games, by the way, that we're talking about on the podcast. So that's also set to come out this month, both uh, the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney trilogy, uh, which I'm doing with Bo, and then Persona 3 Reload Later, which I'm currently doing with nobody. We'll see how that goes. Andrew Orozco from Geek News Now will be joining me for uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. That's coming out at the end of this month, so we'll be releasing that uh, sometime early in March. Sweet. But yeah, that's everything that's coming, that's coming out now. And uh, yeah, it's been a great year for gaming. The This year, uh, 2024 is looking to also be pretty good. If you enjoyed this episode, uh, leave us feedback on your platform of choice. I'll have links in the show notes for where you can listen to our podcasts. Anything else to add, guys? 
Uh, no. no? Uh, it's been a wonderful year, and I'm looking forward to many more to come. And I love you guys very much. Thank you for friendship and lots of podcast memories. And oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, brother. I'm very excited. If you guys will look, I have the OG Zelda gear right now. Oh, fuck yeah. He's kind of enjoying it. This game is so good. She's beauty. She is grace. It is so good. But, all right, guys. That's been enough for now, I think. I've been Ashley Chancellor. I've been Zachary Gio. And I've been Megan Gomez. This is Collateral Gaming, and we are out. Out. Collateral Gaming is a collateral media podcast. All music and game clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.